Ça a fait? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We've got a couple of solutions in here today. All right. Um, as you already know or do not know, I am um, Andrew Williams. I am a student at Newbold, um, just under the mentorship of, of Pastor Mario. And I know that um, uh, I've, not, I've met quite a lot of you. Oh, I'm close, I, I met quite a lot of you, but for those who I haven't met, feel free to always come up to me, say hello. Um, I've, I've, I've gained a very good welcome from this church. A, I've, I've got a lot of mothers in this church now, um, so I'm just happy to be here. I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for, for Pastor Mario and his family for, for uh, blessing me with this honor of speaking to you today. Thank you, Sister Eulalie, as well, for your introduction. Um, and may God be praised. Um, my title of my sermon today is actually, Are You Okay? And the reason I asked that is because, well, I think it's a necessary question. Uh, the, these last couple of weeks, even this last week, but this last couple of weeks have been very um, heavy for a lot of people. There's been a, a, quite a few funerals that have taken place here. Um, and with the, the, the throes and the pulls of life, sometimes we're, um, we're slow to actually converse with each other and understand where we've come from this week. We don't know, and I don't know, what it took for you to get here today. Whether you, get, whether you got here, am I, am I loud? Whether you got here at um, nine o'clock or you just got here five minutes ago, I don't know what it took for you to get here. So I ask, are you okay? Um, if you close our eyes and, and, and bow our heads, dear Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for life. Thank you for allowing us to be here in all our separate stages of life. You have been honorable to us. May you continue to bless and keep those who are in this church and out of this church, Lord. May this message bless at least one person. And as I step back, may you step forward. In your precious name, I pray. Amen. So, um, I've done quite a lot of... I've done quite a lot of... Um, done quite a lot of research. As a student, um, I'm pretty much always on the internet, and I'm a very big mental health advocate. Um, and I want to read some statistics to you um, just before I really, really start into this message. Did you know that one in five adults suffer with moderate to severe depression. And one in four young people, that's children to teenagers, suffer with moderate to severe depression. That's one in four of us, a quarter of, of, of the young people in this church suffer with depression in some degree. That's a big number. That's a very big number. And we sit with each other every week and we don't know what the next person is going through. And the next person doesn't know what we're going through. And we only ever have time for happy Sabbath, how was your week? Ah, it was good. And then we leave it at that. So I ask, are we okay? Um, 
I ask, are we, are we okay? And on top of having these statistics, we also have one in five people, I believe, suffer with a form of PTSD. And one in 13 children suffer with uh, a traumatic event that leads to PTSD. This is the, these are the kinds of things that we are being afflicted with in this church, in, in, in the world. And these are, the only, these are only things that are being reported. There are many people walking around with heavy burdens on their hearts, heavy burdens in their minds, trying to smile the pain away. So many of us are here and we don't even know how we're here. We're just on autopilot. So I ask sincerely, are you, are you okay? I'm not gonna be up here for long, but I just want us to have a very open dialogue. Not right now, obviously, we can't really be opening up our, our business, but I just want us to be able to come to church and find safe haven. Some people come to church and it's just our sixth day of work. We work five days of the week and then we come to church and we work that sixth day. We don't really get that rest. We don't really get that respite. There's always something going on. So I ask, are we okay? And, and Many of us are beside, many, many of us are beside people daily who are going through it heavily. Some of us are living with people who are struggling. Some are even next to people right now who are struggling. A level of, of anxiety and, and, and depression and, and darkness surrounds um, someone in here today, whether we know it or not. And we're just doing our best to keep that smile on our face. And it reminds me of a verse in Peter where it says that the devil roams around like a roaring lion seeking whom he, whom, whom he may devour. And that's what things like depression, anxiety, PTSD, all these other mental ailments do to us. They come at us like a roaring lion. If you think about it, if you really think about it, Think about the nature of a lion. Now, me, I, I love, a, I love a, a, a National Geographic documentary. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a massive fan of, of David Attenborough. That's my guy. And I watch a lot of lions, because that's my favorite animal. And the nature, of, the nature of a lion, the way it hunts, is by coming together as a pack. And they watch and they stalk their prey from afar. And they identify their target. Because it might be three or four or five lions, but it'll be like 50 of what they're looking for in the distance. But they identify their one target. And then they slowly start to make their move. If you think about the way lions hunt. And then they get closer and closer and closer and then the chase begins. And what they typically do is they attack the pack 
as one. But they single out one who strays away from the pack to ensure their survival. Or they attack from multiple angles to bring, up, to bring about confusion amongst the pack. Are you following me? Do you see where I'm going with this? The enemy stalks every single one of us like a pack of lions, like a pride of lions. And he banks on us to abandon our pack. He banks on us to abandon our church. He banks on us to abandon our friends and our family. He banks on us to, to abandon our teachings so that he and his spirits will have free reign over us. Because as you know, and if you've seen these sorts of, these sorts of nature shows, they are always stronger together. But when that one gets away and they all go after that one, what usually happens? But God never gave us a spirit of fear. He never, he never gave us a spirit of depression or anxiety either. But the enemy is banking on us to be overwhelmed by these things. The enemy wants to encapsulate us with depression. He wants to encapsulate you into that fear. He wants to encapsulate you into that darkness. He is banking on you to not say anything. He's banking on you to stay individual, to run from the pack, to run from your teachings, to run from your friends, your family. He's banking on you not to speak up, to try and get out of your situation on your own. He's banking on you. He's hoping that you do that. Are you with me? He's banking on you to lean on your own understanding. To break away from your friends, your family, and your godly teachings. He's banking on you to not get help. Because when you're scared, when you are fearful, you move erratically. So he's banking on you to hold on to that spirit of fear. Because when you hold on to that spirit of fear, he's got you. But God does not give us a spirit of fear. A lot of us put on this happy face in church, and when the sun goes down, and when the room gets quiet, what goes on in our minds? Are we okay? When it's physically dark, is it also spiritually dark for us? And I ask myself, how, how, do, you, how, do, you preach, uh, how do you preach God to people who when, when all is said and done, um, and, and done for the day, they have to go back and they have to deal with these sorts of thoughts and these sorts of feelings and these sorts of experiences? How do you tell someone there's hope on the end of this when they, they just can't see it? And the answer is always, the answer always leads back to Christ. Jesus was a preacher. He was a preacher. And he was a teacher. But above all, 
the most, one of the most tremendous things he did was to show people how to love and how he loved. That was some of the most impactful things he did because there were preachers and teachers at the time, but Jesus was a way maker. He didn't do things in the conventional way. Jesus would stand by the people that were stepped on by the rest. Jesus would walk with the people who ran from him. Jesus would shelter the ones who would be attacked by the enemy. He is the one who says that he is the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. He also says that as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Who is the world? Us. The people, as long as he is in us, he will be the light of us. He is reminding us that as long as he's with us, there will always be illumination on our path. And what is the absence of light? Darkness. An enemy is banking on you to remain out of the absence of God, because that's when he knows he's got you. But even Christ walked with a pack. Even Christ had people around him. And if you think about it, the enemy always gets you when you're alone. He always tries to get you when you're alone. He did the same thing with Christ. He'd do the same thing with you. If you think, that, think about a time when Christ was tempted. Who was around him? No one. The enemy preys on us to not pray to God. He, he, he hopes that you get used to being in the dark. And he hopes that you even, you even play it off as just one of those things. Ah, oh, yeah, I'm just having one of those days. Yeah, I cried today. It's all right. It's nothing. You know, he banks on you for, you for you to play it off like that. Yes, we will go through rough patches, and yes, may, things may not always go how we want them to, but you were never meant to continue to be in that rough patch. You were never meant to stay in that bondage. You were never meant to always be walking in darkness. That was not the calling on your life. The word says that your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. So let the word of God illuminate the path before you. Let the word of God order your steps. Let the word of God comfort your heart. Let the word of God alleviate the stress that you're feeling let the word of God repair you in places that you thought were irreparable. Be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. You don't have to figure it all out today. Let God move that mountain for you. You don't have to figure that out. Just be willing. Just be primed and ready, and God will do the rest. If you relinquish these burdens to God, the word says that he will give you rest. The word says that he is the one who is the great healer. The word says that he is the one who knows and sees all. There's nothing new under the sun that God has never seen. There's nothing too small or too mighty for God to put his hands on and for you to feel the effects of. 
And I don't know who came into this place heavy-hearted, but today let me tell you this. God will take that weight off of you if you just hand it to him. And it may not be when and how and where you like it, but trust in God and he will do the rest. That is his promise in this word. That's the promise in this word. God, God encourages you that if you are in a dark place to seek him and he will handle the rest. Let God illuminate those dark spaces in your life today. For you were once in darkness, let, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. So if you didn't know this, or, or, or it's been a while, let me remind you, God does not play about his children. A lot of us are, 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 are black today, are black in here today. You know how your mom don't play about you. There's no way you could step outside your house looking any sort of way. Even to this day, I still hear, you know what, last week, and this is, how, this is how universal this thing is. Last week, a friend of mine was hospitalized. Um, and I won't go into the details for, for her sake. But she was hospitalized, and I went to see her the same day. Because she had called me, and then she had, um, she had fallen and they called the ambulance and everything. I'd got, I went to see her. And she said to me, I asked her even, sorry, I asked her, I hope you were wearing good underwear. <laughs> and, she, and she said, luckily I was, because she had no control of her body and the way they were just lifting things up and putting things on her and da da da. And that's just one of those things that black mothers just drill into you. Make sure you're wearing something nice in case you fall down on the roadside. They want people thinking that you come from some, some, any, any house. Do you know what I mean? Our mothers don't play about us. And even more so, God does not play about his children. There is nothing that you can do, there's no way that you can go that God is not going to come and get you. He did not bring you this far to leave you. I don't care if you are, if you are younger, if you are older, if you are two, if you are eight, if you are 15, 18, 92, 67. God did not bring you this far to leave you where you're at. You are never too young or too old to be blessed and to be carried by God. It doesn't matter who or what you are, God will still carry you. You are still a priority to him. It doesn't matter that I'm standing here as a young man and, and on fire for the, for the Lord and you are still as much of a priority to him as I am. Your prayers matter. Just keep praying. Your lives matter. You are loved. Do you understand that you are loved by God? There is nothing that he, that he won't do for you. The enemy walks around like a lion seeking who he may devour. But God and his angels stand like a herd around you, seeking to protect whosoever calls on him. If you stay within the fence that God has put around you, he promises no weapon formed against you shall prosper. 
He promises to be with you in the water and in the fire. When you have God in your corner, you will never have to worry. I remember when I was young in, younger in the Lord and my elder of my church drilled Psalms 91 into me and told me to remember it. Unluckily, I've, I've forgotten it, but I've got the word of God here, so I will read. But he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers. And under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. Ooh. Ooh, 10 years later, it still hits. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right side, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you. Hey. Nor shall any plague come near your dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all of your ways. In their hands shall they bear you. Shall they bear you up. In their hands shall they bear you up. May the angels of the Lord bear you up in their hands, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion. And the cobra, but the young lion and the serpent shall trample underfoot. The devil roams around like what? A roaring lion. And the young lion and the serpent shall what? Trample underfoot. There is nothing, no darkness, no evil, no attack that God cannot protect you from. Nothing is too dark for God's light. It's my prayer today that if you are in those dark places or you're having those dark thoughts, that you turn back to God Because he has a plan for you and he always had. He always has a plan for you. There is nothing. There is no amount of darkness. There's no amount of damage. There's no amount of, 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 of pain or crying that will stop God from coming to your rescue. The devil walks around. like a lion seeking whom he devour. But God and his angels stand like a herd around you, protecting you from whomsoever thinks they can try you or whatsoever thinks they can try you. And as I close, I just want, us, I just want us to just to ponder on this.
I want you to understand how much God loves and cares about you. You know being here is not by, by chance, right? Earlier I gave you some, t- some statistics. I'll give you one more. You know the chance of you being alive right now is one in 400 trillion. You being here is not a mistake. No matter what people or the enemy tells you, you being here is by God's grace alone. A lot of us come from black backgrounds. You know how we came into our former countries and into this country. You know that to be taken from Western Central Africa and brought to the United States or into the Caribbean, Caribbean, what am I saying? Uh, the Caribbean. You know the conditions that we were brought into those islands. You know how much people did not make it on just a convoy from, from, from A to B. But yet you are here. Before we were even in the womb, God had his hands on us. God had his hands on you. You are meant to be here. Whether you think that or feel that way, you are meant to be here. As long as you are drawing breath into your lungs, there is a purpose for you on this earth. Don't listen to the thoughts of, of, of darkness that tries to befell you, especially when you are alone. Because we are never alone. Even in our individual and, and, and quiet moments, we still have God. Amen. So I ask you today, and I ask you to ask yourselves, are you Okay. And to those who it doesn't apply to, I charge you to be like like Christ. I charge you to be a resting place for the people who are around you who just can't take those steps like they used to anymore. I charge you to stand with the person who is being trodden on for the majority of their lives. I charge you to love that person. I love to love your neighbor. If my main message does not apply to you, this will. Continue to love each other and love yourselves because you are meant to be here. And I know we all have, I'm closing now, I know we all have our own separate issues and problems and you may not know who to turn to or who to speak to or who to pray with because you're going through it alone. I want to personally say that. Me, Andrew, Michael Williams, is he, I am here for you. Amen. Amen. I am here for you. There is nothing... There's no time, there's no place that you could not call me. If it's important, I will try my hardest to be there. I cannot be like God and be everywhere, but I will do my best. That is the charge that's on my life. So, I want to end with this. If there is something or some or anything you you need or want or just would like to talk to about talk about, you can get your phones out. My number. I'll give you a minute. 
because you may not, you may have something you want to say now, but you don't really want to say it now. Do you know what I mean? My number is 075 540 878 20. I'll say again. My number is 075 540 87820 and my name is Andrew Williams I'm not going I don't want to stand up here and preach a word to you and then not follow through the call is to be like God the call is to be like Jesus and he gave us the example we are humanitarians at first if there is anything at any moment, I may not always have the answer, but if, if there's anything you just want to talk about, pray about, you want to rehash some certain things, make me aware of certain things, call my number or message me. Calling me is best because I don't really, you know, your message is a bit, uh, but call me, call me anytime. Okay? Amen? Amen. All right. Our eyes are closed. Our head is bowed. The Heavenly Father, how beautiful is it to see? How beautiful is it to hear, to feel, to touch, to smell and to taste of the word that you give to us? Lord, I want you to surround every single one of us in this church like a herd of cattle. Whether we think we're strong and big and tough or we feel like we're weak and meek, Lord, you said in your word that if we call to you, you will come running for us. May you continue to protect and guide and walk with and stand by and carry and love and honor every single one of us here, Lord. I don't know who's going through what or who needs a change in their life, Lord, but you do and they do. And you remind us, Lord, that there is no amount of darkness that can cover up the light that is you. You are the light of our world. You are the the beginning and the end. You are our all in all. And it is the trick of the enemy telling us that the, the light does not exist. The light cannot reach you. The damage that you've got is too irreparable. He'll convince us that we're broken and we're we're not worthy of being saved or being loved. But Lord, you love us broken anyway. You love us when we're not worthy. You love us when we're weak. You love us when we're strong. You love us when we're on our own feet and walking by ourselves and you love us when we can't even stand anymore, Lord. Protect our hearts and our minds. May you continue to bless every single one of us in our own individual ways. And charge to us also to be more like you, to be there for our brethren, Not just to shake your hand and to say happy Sabbath, but to be there for each other. Because I would much rather be there for someone when they're alive than to be there for their funeral. So Lord, make a way. Make a way, as you always do. 
In your precious name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you.